So you've all seen my recent video on the M1 MacBook Air going up against the Core i9 MacBook Pro, 16 gigs of RAM on the M1, 64 gigs of RAM on the Core i9. And this machine is almost $4,000, where this machine was only $1,200. Yes, the M1 did lose by a few seconds on the .NET build tests, but you have to consider a few things. One is the M1 is not running .NET processes natively, and it's not gonna be running your .NET Core 3.1 projects yet. Now in this video, what I wanna do is address some of the comments that you've left me and run some more tests that are gonna be based on your comments. Some of you are leaving really awesome comments and I wanna thank you for that. Two of the commenters I wanna point out here are Merkin, M3RKEN, M3RKEN maybe, maybe his name is Ken, I don't know. And then Francisco Ortega. Francisco has a few steps that he outlined in his comment that I'm gonna reproduce right now. So first let's start with Merkin's comment. During the first .NET new command, so he's referring to the video where I created a new project, a new console application using the .NET new command. When you run it for the first time, it sets up some plumbing, template initialization. This is why the MacBook Pro 16 in the test is faster. Yes, the first time was faster because I've already ran a .NET command and the M1 MBA still needed to run this process. So I did run that twice actually and both times the M1 was a little bit slower. He goes on to say .NET 5 will now be ported to native Apple Silicon, which is pretty important. I think very important in the comment to know that. It will always be running using Rosetta 2. So it'll always be slower than an Intel-based Mac. It's an interesting take. So far, that actually corresponds to the findings that I've seen. But I am gonna do a couple more tests here today and I'm gonna have these machines plugged in, whereas in the other video they weren't unplugged. That might make a difference based on Mr. Ortega's comment. We'll get to that in a moment. So Merkin continues to say .NET 6, however, is scheduled to support Apple Silicon, so it should be much faster. Release date, November 2021. You know how these things go. I hope it gets released by then, but who knows, there may be a delay. Another caveat with .NET and Apple Silicon is the debugger does not work on Apple Silicon. Neither in VS Code, VS for Mac, nor JetBrains Rider. A fix is expected for .NET 5 to arrive soon. As your video concludes, you can still run .NET, just not debug. So his conclusion as a .NET developer, Apple Silicon is not yet ready for .NET, but it's gaining traction. So thanks for that comment, very insightful, appreciate that. Now let's talk about Francisco Ortega's comment. He says, from what I understand, when low on battery, the Air with the M1 chip uses the efficiency cores instead of the performance cores. It doesn't have a fan in it, so it has to be more efficient. Now typically I wanna show off how we would, as developers, use these machines on a typical day, right? We would travel with these because these are laptops, these are mobile machines, so we would have them unplugged at least for part of the day. So most of the videos I do here about the M1 is with the laptops unplugged. So I wanna do a test today with them plugged in to see if the MacBook Air can actually beat the MacBook Pro this time. And that's what Francisco suggests here. Also, can you get an executable on Mac and run only the executable? If you compile both projects, the .NET run command also adds an extra Rosetta translation each time you run it. And he's asking this as a question because I think maybe this is something we can test. So we're going to do that. Now, I did look at the process that was run and it is running in Intel emulation mode and you use the .NET run command. We're going to actually release DLL from the console application and run that and see how long that takes. All right. so. To the test. I have both of these machines plugged in and let's go ahead and create a new project here. I'm using Visual Studio for Mac, by the way, just because some folks might be using it. You don't have to use it. And I'm gonna create a new app. It's gonna be a console application. We're gonna use .NET 5. Project name is gonna be console net 5 app 1. Let's go ahead and create that. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the MacBook Air. It's gonna be a console application, .NET 5, console, app, .NET 5, app 1. I think I put too many apps in there, but does it matter? All right, so there is our console application. And just to verify that it works on both of these machines, I'm going to hit the play button there in Visual Studio. So it builds and gives me some output. 
and there we go. The hello world application gives me hello world in the terminal. Let's do the same thing on the M1 to make sure that works. And yes, that also builds and prints out hello world. Awesome. Now what I want to do is build a more complex example that takes a while to execute. And we're going to use the same example that I had in my other .NET video here. If you missed that, check it out. I'll link to it down below. And it's this code right here. So I did that using Visual Studio Code. And all I'm gonna do is just copy out the entire program.cs file here. So let's copy that, let's paste it in here. And all this does to make this process longer and more intensive creates a loop and it executes the loop 100 million times. And what it does that's intense is it uses the cryptography namespace and it executes a cryptographic function 100 million times. So that's going to take a while. All right, let's do the same thing on the MacBook Air. I'm going to copy that code and paste it in here. By the way, this code is straight from the .NET repository in their documentation over there on GitHub. They have examples of how to do these kinds of performance metrics. I didn't make this up. All right, once this application finishes with the for loop, it's going to print out to the console a message. So here it says, all done MVP wins. And this one says, all done MBA wins, question mark. All right, I'm going to not run this right now, but I'm gonna build it into a DLL, compile it in a release mode. So let's switch this to release and switch this one to release. And I'm gonna right click here, not really right click on a Mac. I'm using two fingers, it's a gesture. I kinda like that, instead of having two separate buttons. Let's go to the folder. So let's publish it, publish it to folder, and that's fine, let's do that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the MacBook Pro, publish to folder, good to go. So we've got the DLL, right there for each one of these published applications. It's the same exact code. Now let's run that and execute it on the command line and we're gonna time it, okay? So I'm gonna pop open a terminal. I'm gonna change directory into this published directory. There we are. I'm gonna go to .NET and pass in that DLL, which is console app one dot DLL. All right, that's set up. Let's do the same thing on the MacBook Pro. Change directories to publish and then .NET DLL. We're all set up to run this test and we'll see how long this takes. Now I'm gonna press enter at the same exact time so that we know which one is going to win. Oh, hang on a sec. I'm getting a Zoom call here. Hey, everybody. Hey, Hi, Alex. Alex. Howdy. What's up? You know, you should really use the time command. Yeah? Yeah, you should use the time command. You gotta use the time command. Yeah, the time command. Time. Right. Okay, okay, I get it. I know you've been saying this in the comments that I should use the time command, so I'm gonna do that now. Thanks, everybody. Until our next meeting, keep those comments coming. All right, I'll add the time command right now. Time and time over here. And I'll still press enter at the same time. Boom, and they're off. Let's see who finishes first. I don't have any kind of progress indicator here, so I don't know how long it's gonna take. Now, what I am hearing right now is the MacBook Pro's fans kick in. While that's happening, by the way, let's check out the activity monitor and see what's going on. And here is the MacBook Air. There's the .NET process. As you can see, it's running on the Intel architecture, taking up about 100% of the CPU there. So that's pretty cool. Memory consumption by .NET, or oh, Visual Studio is taking up a lot, not really .NET. And there's a bunch of mono processes right there. On the MacBook Pro, oh, it already finished. Didn't have enough time to check. I'll run this again just so we can see. All right, so here are some results. We have 58 seconds on the MacBook Air with the M1 chip, and we have 50 seconds on the MacBook Pro with the Intel chip. Again, even with the built output, the MacBook Pro wins this one, even when they're plugged in. Let's run this again, just to make sure, like a good little scientist that I am, not really. And we'll kick that off at the same time so we can get some new numbers on this. We should have the same numbers or they're about. And let's take a look at the process, the activity monitor here on the MacBook Pro. .NET is using 100% of the CPU, and there it is on the M1 as well. 
also using about the same amount. There's Visual Studio, Windows Server, whatever that is, is taking up a lot of RAM on the MacBook Pro, Visual Studio taking up a lot, and Mono not taking up that much. So there's our activity monitor, and we're about to get some results here. This program does not take that long to run. So it took a little bit longer on the MacBook Pro this time, 57 seconds versus 60 seconds on the MacBook Air. All right, so there you go, folks. As you can see, here are the results, and the MacBook Air being a machine that's about three times less than the MacBook Pro is given the results that are about the same speed. It's a little bit slower, but they're pretty damn close considering the cost difference. And once .NET 6 is out, I think that's just gonna completely change the game, especially when the new MacBook Pros of 2021 come out, which I'm really looking forward to. And I think that's just gonna really leave behind the competition, which is Intel, unless Intel really steps up their game, which is something I'm also hoping will happen. <laughs> so I'm hopeful in either one of those cases, because this is just gonna make us developers better at what we're doing and faster and more productive. All right, so thanks for your comments and I appreciate the really good comments from you guys, from Merkin and from Francisco, as well as all the other helpful comments and constructive comments. After all, we're here to learn together. I'm learning from you as well as hopefully you're learning from me. And if you're leaving good comments, good constructive comments that are helpful, other people will learn from those comments as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this one. Take it easy and happy 2021.